So, today's video we are going to be taking a look at the new diesel heater from Max Speeding Rods. Unbeknown to me, well I did know at the time, but unbeknown to me, um, the diesel heater that I've actually got in my original van, my Renault Traffic, is a Max Speeding Rods diesel heater. Um, and Max Speeding Rods have actually released a new diesel heater, which you may or may not have seen on other channels, um, which has now got Bluetooth compatibility. Uh, and a built-in app. Um, so without further ado, let's have a quick look at what is contained within this package. So we have got the new diesel heater, which looks quite similar to the other one, although it's had a bit of a facelift, it seems. We have got a diesel tank. As you'll probably tell from this video and previous videos, I do not go into the technical specs and details of uh, all the equipment. I've done my research, I've done my bit, my videos are not about that. So if you are that way inclined, please go and check out other people, like the likes of Alex Fruit, for example, who actually takes it to complete pieces because he likes to understand how things work. And he will go into much more details and explain to you the things that you may or may not want to know. So I guess this is the box of bits. Bunch of cables connected, uh, wrapped in some braided hose, which is quite nice. We've got the uh, silencer or manifold, a pair of max speeding gloves. We've got a bunch of connectors for connecting up the heating duct, a box. Hmm. That looks like some sort of cleaning device. Obviously, we don't look at instructions, so we're probably never going to find out what that is. Ah, the fuel pump. It's a different colour. I don't know what that means. Does that mean it's a new type? Has it been upgraded? Is it quieter? Probably not. We've got a pipe. We have got a fuel filter. We have got a fuel line. If you've installed a diesel heater, you'll know exactly why I did that. I've got a replacement one coming. Um today so hopefully it's all good and uh, it'll it'll replace that you can pick them up dead cheap i'll put a link in the description and um, that is the plate that goes on the bottom of the diesel heater this is a kind of like little oh looks a bit different that does okay that kind of connects onto there somehow and then that goes onto the bottom of the diesel heater on the one that i can't remember exhaust so that again, that gets connected onto that with the muffler on the end, just to stop it sounding like um, a plane taking off. And then you've just got a bunch of bits to connect it all together. That's the heating duct, obviously, that uh, is never long enough, it seems, and it costs an absolute fortune to buy. Um, but that effectively will go on there. But you need to connect that onto there, and then you need your heating duct to come out of there, if you like, to one of them. You put a little clamp around that and then obviously that's um where the heat will come out you can't see it but there's actually a little lip there so you can actually angle that wherever you want it to be if that's how you want it i've seen people change these and put different ones on uh, i've seen people use one of them i've seen people get another pipe so there's one coming off there one coming off there so you can have them in different areas in the van that's the remote to turn it on and off so apparently you can stand outside your van if you're not using your phone you can just sort of have it on your keys and you can just turn it on, that'll come on, but obviously you'd have to be pretty close to the van for that to work, I would assume. silence and there's like a little kit in here to connect it all up uh, like a little bracket so you can kind of secure the bracket onto something maybe on the subframe of the vehicle etc so it's really important this stays still and there's also a good thing to to note on this there's a little hole on the bottom so if you wanted to understand which way it goes does it go that way that way that way that way this needs to be flat so don't don't get when you mount it don't mount it at an angle because if you do, any liquid that builds up in here will sit in the corner, 
right? So try and keep it flat and then anything that does build up will work its way loose. And when you're driving and stuff, it'll move it around and get it out. But the purpose of that tiny little hole is for any liquid to escape. So remember that when you intend to install this device. There's, a, there's already a bend in the pipe and I think it's probably sensible just to keep that. What we want to think about is this is coming from underneath the van and we want that kind of sit level. I just need to look at the instructions because what I do need to know is which one's the exhaust. I think it's this side. I think that's air. If I remember last time, I think that's air and fuel in and that is exhaust out. That's E, that's fuel inlet. C is air inlet and D is the exhaust. Okay, so that's good. This has got something to do with that strap. I wonder if the strap is to wrap around this and then you use these little clips to hold it in place. I'm not sure. I can't see anything on the instructions. I wonder if Mr. Brood has got back to us. Which sealant did you did you use? What type of sealant? Uh, I, I bought a like a fireplace heat temperature one just from like a Wix or something. Yeah. Yeah. Just because I thought it's, it's heat wise and it doesn't actually get hot. It shouldn't get hot. But I thought, you know what, makes sense in my head. Yeah, that's what I thought because the last one I didn't I didn't like put anything down because I thought. Well, to be honest, I was just rushing it, so I just thought, oh, I'll be all right, I won't worry about it. And it's never been a problem. And when it was on, I actually did did touch the plate, and it wasn't, I mean, it was warm, but it wasn't red hot or anything. So, but yeah. I, I think it's good to create a seal anyway, isn't it, regardless of whether it's hot or not? Yeah, because yeah, if you've got like a max fan and stuff, max fans, like where you're extracting, it's going to pull air up through any easy access orifice. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, you... Overall, they're good units, and then you can change the. Uh... That voice to English or Russian if you want. Or <laughs> <It's a... laughs> we'll just keep Chinese, who knows? Yeah. Um, but you know, it's, it seems overall it's quite, it's quite a good kit, to be honest. They've made some changes on. I noticed the exhaust um, piping's different as well. It's a bit more flexible. Yeah, so that type is the ones which come with the like more bastos and um, planar at uh, the auto term. So that's the good quality stuff. Yeah. Which is nice to see included. Yeah, because the last, um, the last yeah, one, um, mine is kind of just held on just purely because I've um, secured the the muffler in place. And if I move the muffler, it will literally the the piping that's connected to the diesel heater will just fall off because I couldn't any jubilee clip that I tried to put on it just wouldn't compress it at all. Yeah, those jubilee clips it comes up still top though. Yeah. So see if we can get some. It's, I think it's 26, 28 mil is the size you need. Right. Um, I find that when Amazon like Prime for like four quid for a pack of four or something. Alex, I'm gonna have to go because I think I've got a delivery turning up, so I need to go out and uh, sort that out. Ah, no worries, man. Have a good day, man. Yeah, you too, mate. Cheers. I'll catch you up soon. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Okay, so a few days has passed. Obviously, for you, it's a few seconds, but as you can see, the van has completely transformed. I'm trying not to give too much of that away. Uh, because I don't know if this video is coming out um, before my van build video or after. So if it's after, you've already seen it. If not, then it's coming soon. Stay tuned and check out the videos as and when they come out. So, in order to fit this, um, there's two things that I wanted to arrive. One is the hose kit and the other one is this flange. Um, now, before I explain why I've bought these and what they're for... Uh, I just want to be very clear that you can still install the diesel heater without these. These are just optional extras um, to uh, kind of prolong the life and make the install a little bit easier. Um, so this uh, flange basically connects to the diesel heater. Let's turn it around this way. like so and kind of sits on there and goes through the bottom of the van in fact rather than just talk about it let's actually fit it the other thing that i've bought is the upgraded hose kit um, now without going to any deep technical details it's better quality than the stuff it comes with um, 
So it's going to last longer, it's not going to leak as quickly. So the hose kit is quite simply a hose, a filter. I must admit though, this filter that I bought last time cracked, so I had to get another one. So I may use the filter that it comes with because they actually have a new filter. Um, so we'll give it a go. If it leaks, it leaks. We just have to change it. So that's fine. The other two things that I've purchased are a hole saw, which cost me about £20 and I'll only ever use it once. I can't see why I would use that again. So if anybody needs a hole saw to fit a diesel heater, if you want to come and visit me, I'll drill a hole for you. I know it's nothing new, but it's so good to see you. This every day, and I'm still so amazed by you. So hold me tight through the night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just us two. plastic or whatever it's called the flooring cut and that will now sit in place and all I need to do is just bolt it in or screw it into the floor and it will be nice and tight I don't even think I'm going to seal it because of this floor it will make a good seal anyway that's just to stop any exhaust gases getting back through so like I said it's not in the best place but I can always build stuff around it. Um, I can put all my, my chairs and my camping stuff on this side. Um, it'll be fine. Or I can put the water there. But yeah, it's, it's all good. It's all good. I've done it. Okay, that's that connected. We need to find somewhere where we're going to put that onto. I'm just going to put two pieces of wood on there temporarily to screw everything to, uh, or maybe a piece of ply onto here, just as a temporary fix. We've got a few little hard areas that I can screw off there, so uh, we'll get that bit done. And then uh, we'll be good to go. Still can't believe you love me. diesel heater connected up um, now I've got the pump at the angle the filter at the angle there was one of these hoses too short so ideally I would have had another piece of hose in here but I've had to set that at an angle so hopefully that still operates well I think it will now we just need to put some fuel in connect up the cables put in a fuse and it should work Manual pump operation. Press the up and down arrows together. And it's coming on. So I think this is to get the uh, the fuel pushed around. I hope I've got enough diesel because um, I just take, oh, there we go. Wow, that's noisy. Yep, it's going through. Should start to fill into the filter. The fuel at the bottom. 
Now this filter is supposed to be horizontal, not at an angle, so hopefully it won't cause too many problems. But we'll see, we'll see what happens. Here it goes, ramping up now. That's warm air coming out. All right, so update three months later, a little bit longer than expected. And I apologize to Max Speed and Rolls. It's taken me absolutely forever to get back to this video. Um, but yeah, it's a three month update. So you obviously know it's gonna be a genuine one. It's not one that was done a week after it was sent to me. So how am I getting on with the diesel heater? Um, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. It's never failed me, not once. Um, Obviously, I've been in Scotland and the heater is absolutely vital up there because it was a bloody freezing at night time um, and it kept us really, really warm, didn't it? Yeah, very warm. Mika's birthday tomorrow, so she's just playing with some toys that I've got early so I didn't have to go to the um, go to the shop on, uh, on her birthday. So, um, yeah, so it's really easy to use. I'm going to give you a, a demonstration. You'll have to forgive me because I'm in the middle of a van build still. Obviously, it's changed since the last time you saw it. So, in order to turn the diesel heater on, very simply, oh, you can't see it because I've got the light on the camera, but very simply, you just press this button. And it comes up Chinese. There's a couple of little settings that you can play around with. Um, it's kind of got this setting, whatever that is, or you can hold this button down. And and it goes on to the settings of P1 to P5. So P1 is the lowest temperature, P5 is the highest. For some reason, it always starts on P1, um, but I always just pump it up to P5. It makes no difference while it's coming on, but yeah. As soon as it goes up to P5, that's full blast. Once it gets warm enough, obviously you can just turn the temperature down, um, but at the moment it's in startup mode, so nothing happens. Interesting, we're at 0 meters elevation. It's the first time I've seen that. Um, I don't know how it works out the elevation, but um yeah we are at normal is elevation because we're at the seaside right let's let, let that warm up that's it starting to come on so i've still not put the pipes in because i've moved the van around the last week but as you can see that is now on full blast full blast like you would never keep it on that actually it's just ramping up a little bit more that's pretty much full blast now. You can't hear the pump at all, really. Can't hear it? No. So when it's on full blast, you can't hear the pump anyway. Um, and when you turn it down, it's really quiet, you know. So using the control, really, really easy to use. As I said, it's now on P5 full blast, so I can just turn it down to P4, three, two, and you'll hear it go down. And obviously I can get onto the lower setting, which is P1, and it'll just tick over nicely. So what I do need to do is plumb in a few pipes. I'm probably gonna have the heater come out here or maybe come out this side on one of the boards. But yeah, that's it on its lower setting now. Obviously you can hear the pump a little bit in the background, but a diesel heater, you're not even gonna notice it. Literally, if anything, it's gonna like dampen down road noise. So it's all good. So this is the app. Um, I'm not going to pretend to be some sort of expert, but one thing to note, I was backwards and forwards with technical support because I couldn't change the temperature on it. And it turns out, I know it looks daft to you, but it turns out that all you need to do is do that and then you can see it. But I, I wasn't doing that. I was changing it from smart mode to auto to pump to fan, all sorts of stuff, and I still couldn't do it. When it's actually on the auto mode, you you can't see that bit at the bottom. So make sure you have it set to smart and then scroll down and you can see your, your temperatures. So if we go back over here now, if I put them side by side, you see that they both change. So that's gone to P2, I'll go to P5, so that's full blast. And if you want it back onto the lowest setting, back onto P1. So it is a Bluetooth compatible, as we said before, it's a Bluetooth compatible heater unit. Um, so yeah, you can be lying in bed at night time and obviously the controller's fixed to the wall somewhere. You pick up your phone and you say, right, I'm gonna turn the heater on, turn it off. So again, 
I'll turn the heater off now just for demonstration purposes. Still set to Chinese, so you probably hear the Chinese woman shouting in the background. <laughs> so what that does then when you turn it off is it turns off the pump so it stops putting fuel onto the glow plug. A, um, the glow plug is no longer heated and then the fan ramps up to blow cold air on the glow plug to cool it down because the last thing you want to do is turn it off when it's 220 degrees because it'll just knacker the glow plug and that's it that's now cooling down so i'll put some links in the description um go ahead and buy one they are great i wouldn't be saying it otherwise i'd have ripped it out and put a different one, different one in um but yeah like i said earlier in the video three months ago um the last diesel heat i had uh, which my friend Harriet has now got because she bought my van so she will probably vouch uh, that it's uh, never failed it's a really really good heater um, and yeah I've got the same brand now but it's a Bluetooth one I must admit I must admit I never use the app ever so it's there if you want to use it it's up to you but for me I just lean over and press the buttons on the controller it's a lot quicker for me so as you wish, if you want it Bluetooth, if you want to be able to lie in your bed and press it. Um, well, that's not exactly true. Sometimes I do use it when I'm in bed. In the morning, I, I will use it. So that might not actually be true. Um, but the majority of the time, I'm not in bed. I'm walking around or whatever in the van, and I'll just press it because it's on the wall. It's easier just to lean over and press it. But it's Bluetooth, and it does work. Right, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget, like and subscribe. And, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. See you later.